Hey, run that shit up, Chase. I got a G. 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 Check, check. I could get some fuck about it, boy. If it's a problem, I'll put up on check, check. Fuck if I ain't got a dollar. I'll start from the bottom and run up on check, check. What you doing for? Check. My young niggas hit, they gon' shoot for. Check. Skinny get thick, she gon' twerk for. Check. And if she get thought, she gon' fuck for. Check. Well, I got a check. I got a check. I got a check. Check. Well, I got a check. I got a check. I got a check. Check. Boy, I ain't trippin' cause I got a check. Thinking it's bitchy cause I got a check. You can get strippin', yeah, I got a check. The Draco, I drippin' cause I got a check. Y'all into the new dimension, so pay attention. Dry slow, eyes low, four fives close. BDS, straight blind hoes. All new black Balenciaga, and I do this shit with my eyes closed. Y'all stressin' about fine hoes. I'm sitting stressin' about five bowls. Hit the blood, go pick the drawers up. Reinvestin' in five more. Let's talk investments. Highs lows, drop the prices, let mines go. I done sat in this prison cell around a hundred thousand up times four. And this back to that blind, fuck, 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 blind, fuck, 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 blind, fuck. If you ain't feeling it the way I'm giving it, then you can set the press fast forward. Time. Time is something that we can't get back, and time is something that we have a lot of. You can either waste your time or you can use your time wisely. In this life, our time needs to be spent with intention and be spent with purpose. We were all born here with a purpose. We were all born with something that we are supposed to contribute to the world, whether you're five or you're 50, whether you're four or you're 47. Your time is now. Don't allow time to hold you back. You have all the time you need to be successful. Big homie smiles. TTRLA owner. Peace. Oh, hello. Welcome to TTRLA, the wonderful land of cartoons. Here, we make dreams come true. Anything that you want to do has to be started by you. Today on TTRLA, first episode, we have the Black Elote Man. That's right. The Black Elote Man. For those of my people around the globe looking at this commercial and don't know what an elote is, it's the best goddamn corn you'll ever have in your damn life. I'm going to have my man Black Corn Man take it away. Black Corn Man, it's on you. And this is Elijah and Femi, my helper. Elijah and his helper, Femi. And we're going to learn how to make esquite. Esquite. Okay, so what do we do first? We, um, get a cup. Okay. Okay. You know, like, we feel like the... Less, 102.3. I got my boy Harlem Rue with me and Spider Quinn, Bloodline Quinn, boy. Eat the rich shit, man. We also... Hand me the lighter. Hand me the... Oh. Damn, now, grandbaby, why you ain't tell grandpa that this you was starting this? <laughs> She's such a jokester. But yeah, grandpa still blows the the uh reefers, you know? I know y'all call this now the the czar. I don't even know what the fuck a czar is, but I said, give me that shit that is gonna make me say, mm. So shout out to my boy. You know what I mean? Out here in Baltimore. But I wanted to come to y'all, not to, to make jokes or be funny. I also wanted to come to y'all to give you a little bit of enlightenment. How you move out here in life is ultimately how you're going to walk into your destiny. 
So if you want to walk with a purpose-filled step, you have to have intention with everything that you do. So if you're out here causing chaos, just know that your purpose is going to be chaos. So y'all mothers, I said, what's up? Words Hello? of Words of Wisdom there. Tuesdays from Grandpops. I want to shout out to all my grandbabies followers that have been turning up her views. Uh, since I've been on here, she's been getting a lot more likes. And so I like that for her. You know, make sure y'all tune in uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Now, today's words of wisdom is making that dash in between your born date and your death date count. Wondering, Grandpa, what do you mean the dash? Well, when you die and it, an obituary is, is made for you, it has the day that you came into the world and the day you left. And then there's a dash. When they get to that dash, they read your credits like a movie. It's all your contributions to the world. Some people leave this world with no contribution at all. They just leave. What will your obituary say? Do you want a legacy? Or do you want to just leave? Yeah. Say, man, it's Street Top Radio LA. Treetop Radio LA, man, we are broadcasting live, man, via Baltimore, Maryland, man, in Baltimore, Maryland, via Los Angeles, California, man. I'm your host, Big Homie Smiles, man. Y'all can always, they, they, Instagram just deleted my main page. So I was about to get my Instagram page name, but I realized they done deleted the joint. So I apologize about that. But I got backup pages because, you know, I'm water tied to be tight to be tall. You feel me? So if you want to follow me, you know what I'm saying? On my, my personal page, you feel me? Y'all can go ahead, turn up uh, Big Homie Smiles. Oh, no. Big Homie underscore Smiles 41 backup page. It's, it should come up. It's a white background with the same logo that you see in your top right hand corner. And if you're in my audio world and you cannot visually see me, the logo is uh, says TTRLA in red and the background is white. And there's a brown tree with the blue headphones around it. You feel me? Because I want to incorporate my red and blue fraternity. You know what I'm saying? In this, because it's very powerful. The colors that they have behind, you know what I'm saying? They group and organization. You feel me? Because I don't want to consider them again, because I don't want, you know, them people's on my shit. So this is uh, not gang related at all. You feel me? I'm digressing a lot. And my, my podcast today is starting pretty late, you feel me? Because I work with an amazing team and today was our kickback day. So, you know what I'm saying? I had to make sure that I was mingling with the people, you feel me? Because that's what you got to do. Um, so my, my show is actually starting at around 8.30 today. But typically, typically, if you tap in with me, if you tap in with me, if you tune in, my show start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 4.30 p.m. Pacific time, Standard Time. And I believe if you're in the Midwest, I believe it's 6 p.m. I believe, I believe so. Shout out to my boy Cash a Million and Don out there in Kansas City, man, doing his thing. Make sure y'all go follow him on Instagram. It's Cash a Million to Don. You know what I'm saying? He just did a song, I, I believe, with Yuck Mouth. You know what I'm saying? So he, he just like doing his thug thizzle. But anyway, I'm digressing. Make sure y'all check me out, man, on Instagram. That's big homie underscore smiles backup page 41. You feel me? Go ahead and tap in. That's my personal page. I don't really be uh, having my podcast stuff on there like that because it was for my Trees Out Radio page. And that's what the joint, the Instagram deleted. But we're going to get my uh, social, my not my even my social media buzz up. Uh, 
we're gonna get my YouTube channels up. We're gonna create a buzz. I'm gonna create a buzz for myself. So you know that's what I'm out here doing. You know what I'm saying? Working hard, trying to create a buzz for myself. We got a wonderful topic today. But before we get into the topic, I need you to take your thumb, take your thumb, take your thumb, take your thumb, take your thumb. If you ain't got no thumb, take your fist. If you ain't got no fist, take your elbows. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and share, man, to my page and to my channel. The more subscribers I get, the more uh, chances I get of uh, monetizing this page. I done got 100 followers so far. Shout out to all motherfucking 100 followers. I fuck with y'all. You know what I fuck with y'all? 100 followers? Yeah. Oh, something to happen. Hold up. You know why I fuck with you? I'm sorry for cursing. That's the Bacardi kicking in. You know why you 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 the person? It's because you always tap in and tune into me, man. Rain, sleet, or snow. Good or bad. Whether you like the podcast or you don't, you always tapping in with me. You feel me? So I want to appreciate you. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and share to this channel. You feel me? You see T-T-R-L-A. You feel me? T-T-R-L-A. Tap in with me. You understand? This shit is lit. Um, my, my co-host who is um, out L.A., he's the first and only black elote man in Los Angeles, California. You will never see a black elote man in your life. You probably like, big homie smiles. What in the hell is an elote? Well, let me tell you. An elote was originally stemmed from my Mexican... Shout out to the Mexican culture. Shout out to my uncle El Chapo. You feel me? Shout out to my auntie Griselda Blanco. You feel me? Um, but the elote was started in the Mexican culture. You know what I'm saying? It's a, a corn, a whole corn on a stick with a little bit of mandates and a little bit of butter and a little bit of like a little cheese or something like that. And a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper. You put that joint on the boop. Torch, you hear me? The elote is torch. I'm not lying, I'm not kidding you, I'm not jiving you. The elote is torch. So, my co host, who is a local celebrity in Los Angeles, California, is the only black elote man. He out LA doing his thug thizzle. He doing so good, he don't even, he not even on a corner with the elotes. Because if you hit, if you know what I'm talking about, elote people, they be on the corners with the elotes. Elote tamales! Elote tamales! But my man booming so big. He, he, my man is serial entrepreneur too. He got several businesses, let me just tell you. The elote is just one, Okay. So my man doing so good. He got that Lotte uh, joint out there. He do catering events only. So if you're not booking my man for a catering event, <laughs> fuck you. You feel me? Because my man nice. So he not only... He is also the vending machine um, guru. My man is the vending machine guru. You feel me? I'm not sure why my joint is saying it's muted, but my man is the uh, the vending machine guru. He got a he got several vending machines in several locations in Los Angeles. Not only do he have vending machines, he has ATMs. My boy got ATMs, bro. He got ATMs. So if you have an ATM, I mean, well, if you try and get into the business, you try and connect with my man. Follow my boy on Instagram is at Black underscore corn underscore LA underscore man underscore. <clears throat> You'll find him. He's going to pop up immediately. You feel me? He's going to pop up. And not only do he got the ATM, the vending machine, and the Elote joint, he sell clothes and rugs. Like, come on, my man do six. He got six streams of income. You know, they say the quickest way to get to a billion. It's seven. So my man is just one job short away from the seventh. You feel me? I'm I'm headed there. I got how many jobs? One, two, three. I got three. I got to work on my four, four more. But I'm going to get there, though. That shit going to be easy. That shit going to be easy, though. You feel me? 
So um, today is a great topic. We don't got no guests today. I'm trying to work on a, um, this gentleman. He's a, a, a CEO of a, I believe it's like a company to help parents, uh, you know, do better with their kids or something like that. So we try and get him on. I'm trying, you know, work, do my work, my thing, do my thing, and you know, work to get him on here. You feel me? So that's what we working on. I know y'all probably like, damn, she's suited and booted. That's only because. I overstayed my time at work, you know what I'm saying? Because we was having a little kickback today, and it was great. We was having discussions. We was bonding as a team. You feel me? So, I mean, I, I, this is my career, so I love it. Um, so, we, But we got a wonderful uh, topic today. Today's topic is no risk, no reward. Clap it up. That's right. No risk, no reward. Now, the purpose of this episode is to look at the benefits and the disadvantages of taking a risk to get ahead in life. Because we all know, you know what I'm saying? If you're taking a risk, you're taking, an event, you're taking a risk of what? Danger. You know what I'm saying? It's a risk of losing. You feel me? So we're talking about that. and But we're talking about risk of life and shit. You know what I'm saying? So we try and make this, you know, this is real. This is not just about money and investing. Are you are mm, are you taking risk necessary to achieve the ultimate success? You gotta ask yourself that. Are you really out here risking taking risk? Not I ain't saying risking yourself. Taking risk to achieve success, or are you just taking risk to prove something to the next man that you're not scared? Think about it. Are you taking risk to elevate you in life? Or are you taking risk to show the next man that you ain't no sucker? Because there's a lot of y'all out here taking risk, not because you feel me, not because, hold up, my manager just gave me the, you got a guess? Do I got a guess? Okay, I think my co-host just showed up. I think my co-host just tapped in with me. You say what? Damn. I think my man just pulled up in a Porsche Cayenne, the black corn man Porsche Cayenne. I think he just pulled up. Are you sure? He going to tell me what he pulled up in, but are you sure it's a Porsche Cayenne? All right, all right. Uh, go ahead and let him in. Go ahead and let him in. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing my core man, the black elote man, the only elote man in Los Angeles, California, black core man. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Black cool man into the motherfucking building. Oh, oh, shit. oh shit. <laughs> What's up? What's up with your mind? Hey, and I'm chilling, you know, working and multitasking. We getting to it and getting to it. You feel me? I was just telling them how you was a serial entrepreneur. I was just actually concluding my good spiel about my wonderful co-host. I was letting them know that you a serial entrepreneur and you got at least six streams of income. And to be a billionaire, you want to have seven. So you on your way. Shit, man. We ain't got all six yet, but we definitely working on it. We had like three or four. Yeah, three and four. four right now, but we working on it. We working on it. See, I got high expectations for my co-hosts. You feel me? Yeah. I got high expectations. Now, the title for the day, uh, Black Hole Man, is No Risk, No Reward. Now, the purpose of the of the episode that I was telling our audience. Yeah, about, you two on the point. You stay on point. <laughs> we, we, we all risk this week, man. Risk this week, man. Let's go. You see, God told me that. God said, no risk, no reward. I'm saying, say less, God. Yeah, we heavy on the risk this week, man. We didn't have some shit. Somebody done broke into one of the fucking ATMs. Got to get parts replaced on that motherfucker. We yeah. just fucking dealt with bullshit with one of our vending machines. Going to have to move that motherfucker. We all risk this week, man. Fuck. We all risk. No risk, no reward. So the purpose of the episode is basically to uh, look at the benefits and the disadvantages of taking risks to get ahead of life. Are we taking risks necessary to achieve the ultimate success? 
You know what I'm saying? I want my audience to have a cognitive discussion amongst their peers about why they feel that taking risks is or isn't beneficial. And I also wanted to break down with my audience what the definition of risk is and the definition of reward so we can put together the slogan, no risk, no reward, and how it came about. Because I want people to understand, you know what I'm saying, how it came about or how we feel that it came about, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I also personally feel that um, experiencing different things in life must be some sort of, it has to be some sort of risk involved. So when you uh, elevate and then you go into new stages in life, you taking risks because risk is about uncertainty. You don't really know what's happening. So in order for you to like get a, a proper understanding of what's happening in life, you have to take some type of risk. That's how I feel personally. Now, um, anytime you're doing anything new, it's a risk. So you definitely got to take risk if you want to fucking throw wars for sure. You feel me? If you got to take risk, and you know what I'm saying, in life. And so how will you know you your likes or your dislikes if you're not taking a risk for opportunity? You feel me? Yeah. How you going to know? How you going to know what you like and you dislike if you're not really taking risk for opportunity? So you're not I'm gonna sure have no people, idea you know, you're gonna be sitting in comfort. You're gonna be sitting in comfort. You're gonna be like, damn, this shit comfortable as hell. How the fuck I'm gonna get some more money? Cause you ain't taking risks, bitch. You never gonna get no more money. You comfortable as fuck. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. what you gonna say? Nah, I was agreeing with you. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, that's true as shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sure people have heard of look, like no risk, no reward. And for those who haven't, it's like a colloquial, uh, a colloquial saying. And colloquial just means that it's a universal a saying that everybody knows about. So um, the same is basically mean if you don't take chances, a.k.a. risk, you'll never reap the benefits of rewards. So the definition of risk, I just want people to understand what a risk is. A risk is not nothing positive, okay? A risk is a situation involving or exposure to danger. Okay? That's a risk. When you're taking a risk, you're involving yourself or exposing yourself to danger. Okay? Now, a reward is a thing given or in recognition of one's service or effort or achievement. So, I'm going to break it down on a, on, a, on a real basic level. So if a reward is something that is recognizing the service or an effort of achieving and a risk is involving exposure and danger and you're able to take that risk that involves in exposure and danger and turn it into a, a recognition of your effort and achievement, you pass the fucking test. Because the risk was supposed to take you out. Why was it supposed to take you out, Big Homie Smiles? Because it was it exposing you to danger. How, how do I know if I'm getting exposed to danger? Okay, number one, if you are taking a risk in a relationship, all right? I ain't going to get too far. I ain't going to get too far in my, my show. But I'm just saying, I just want to throw that out as an example. No risk, no reward. If you're in a relationship, you're taking a risk. you exposing yourself to danger. What's the danger in a relationship? Getting fucked over. Somebody saying they love you and they don't really love you. Somebody saying they, they oh, that's my friend. The nanas, the nanas. You know what I mean? So that's somebody, you know what I'm saying, that's taking your... Your 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 kindness for weakness. That's a risk. So can there be a reward without risk? Without risk, there is no reward. You will never be able to achieve a goal in life if you're not taking a risk. So I just want people to understand that. You have to put yourself in harm's way, actually. It's kind of crazy, right? You actually have to put yourself in harm's way to it to indulge in a reward but the hardest way that you put yourself in you have to it has to be uh mapped out you actually purposeful. have to know yeah huh? purposeful it has to be it has purposeful, to be purposeful. Yeah, it can't we be not just playing reason. chicken with the mac truck we out who we risking for a reason <laughs> come on you risking for a reason you can't not just be out here risking yourself and it's no purpose you can't be out here robbing people right you can't be out here taking shit from people. You can't be out here scamming people. 
You can't be out here killing people and there's no reward in that. Okay, the reward is a temporary reward. Yeah. If I rob you, I'm going to get a, a money temporarily. Right? If yeah. I scam you, I'm going to get money temporarily. If I kill you, you dead for life. Right? But what's the reward? What's the what's the longevity in that? It's no longevity in robbing, scamming, or killing. Either if you kill, you're going to get locked up for murder, or somebody going to kill you. If you scam, you're going to get locked up for scamming, or somebody going to scam you. Yo, you. You scam the wrong person, you could get killed too. They're going to kill you for that one for real. You feel me? So you it has to be so when I'm when I'm saying uh without without risk there's no reward it has to be something that is uh going to give you something beneficial when it comes to investing right a person's risk tolerance is an important factor in determining their portfolio and how their money should be allocated right so for for you black woman because you are an investor your risk tolerance is a lot higher then maybe my risk tolerance, right? Because you're building a portfolio of things that you can accomplish based on your investments and how your money that you make off your investments is going to be allocated to other opportunities that may have some risk in it. Like you said, your ATM, right? Yeah. Your ATM right now, is it, it, when you did it, it was a risk reward. The risk is... Anywhere you put that motherfucker, a nigga gonna break into it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Talk to Look at this right Yeah. But the reward, but the reward, right, is the amount of motherfucking merchants you got swiping those, swiping off that bitch. Yeah. So it, 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 it outweighs itself. You know what I'm saying? And the real reward is really the longevity because we're not even really caring about the small petty money that's coming in from one machine. It's about, okay, we locked in here. This gives us potential to lock in at another location and continue to run this for more than just let me make a, a dollar this one month and shit. Right. You want to have a consecutive, right? So yeah. after the risk, after the risk, the risk, right, is putting your ATMs in a place where you you may have gained a little relationship with the owner, but you don't really know that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Right. But the, re the reward is, is that he has so much traffic that the risk in somebody breaking in that joint is going to be beneficial because you're making money. So yeah. you're going to be able to fix whatever they broke into. But now you got things smarter. How the fuck can I stop my ATM from getting broken into? Do I put a bar around yeah, a bit? We, we get the, the little machine. We get, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's a cage we got to get because they broke the screen on this motherfucker, which is like, you really dumb because you couldn't get no money through the fucking screen. But okay. You got to do something different, right? So yeah. now you got to think, damn, now I've got to take a bigger risk, right? And that bigger risk is investing more money into a caged ATM. Yeah. Because if you have a caged ATM, guess what? You're preventing, you're preventing more, you're, you're stopping people from a, even attempting. They're going to see like, it and like, damn, man, ain't, ain't, get in shit this ain't shit. been going on, ain't flying. Ain't flying, you know what I'm saying? So that's 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 the risk you take it. And so when you think of um uh like a, a questionnaire to help you understand a person's tolerance for risk, you gotta ask them like you gotta ask some questions. Are you okay with losing money? <laughs> that's the first motherfucker. Are you okay with losing money? Are you okay with losing money before you begin to make money what? and possibly losing more money before you begin to make and possibly losing more money while making money still? You got to be ready to take the risk. You got to be you got to be ready to take the risk. You got to be ready to take the risk because you know what I'm saying? If, if you are, if your tolerance for risk is high, your your reward is going to be high. And so, because it's a formula, and I want people to understand that the risk without reward is is not just a saying. It's it's an actual formula. The one and three, like I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you an example, and I'm getting too deep, but I'm getting too far because I'm ahead of myself in my 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 shit. But it's a formula. So the formula is. Uh, like say I invest one dollar in Black Corn Man's ATM machine. 
I'm expecting $3 back. That's the one in three ratio. I'm putting up $1. You have no dollar, right? You got $0. Yeah. I'm giving you a dollar to kick off whatever the fuck you got going on. I need three back. That's my profit, $2, right? Because That's your reward got... right there. For taking the risk of giving me the dollar, I could possibly burn that motherfucker right in front of your face and you cannot get shit. But for taking that risk, your reward is the $2 that you earn back. Yeah, exactly. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So you have to, it's not just, this is not just a saying. It's an actual method to the madness. You know what I'm saying? So, so when you think about it, you got to ask yourself, what is it, what is meant by the term risk and reward? Risk and reward, like I was telling y'all, is a ratio formula used to measure the uh, expected gains of a given investment against the risk of a loss. So when when Black Core Man decided that he wanted mm -hmm. to invest in being a lote man, right? He took under consideration that when it comes to investing, I have to think about a little bit more. I have to think about the money that I is going to be the gain money, right? So if I'm investing a lot up front, I got to think about the gain that I'm going to get in the, on the back end. You know what I'm saying? Because like without risk, there is no reward. Like you can't get nothing if you're not risking a little bit of investment. And, and a risk reward ratio is typically exposed as a figure for the assessed risk and the assessed risk separated by a colon from the figure for the prospective reward. Like I was just giving you an example. One semicolon three. One is my investment in the business. Three is my profit back. Now, what is the relationship between risk taking and rewards? Now, there can be a positive correlation ex that exists between risk and return. Oh shit, I forgot I was supposed to um You got your phone? My fault, my fault. I forgot to send the link to somebody, man. I forgot about that. Damn, they probably think I'm jiving shit. All right, but um Risk reward ratio is a formula used to measure the expected gains of a given investment against the risk of a loss. A risk reward ratio is typically expressed as a figure for the assessed risk separated by a colon from the figure for the prospective reward. Remember, I was telling y'all that a dollar semicolon three. That's my dollar. I I invested in two black corn man. The three is the the return on that investment, right? Uh, <coughs> So what is the relationship between risk taking and rewards? A positive correlation exists between risk and return. The greater the risk, the higher the potential for a profit or loss. So we can use this. We can take this. Let's, let's bring it a little bit more personal. For me, when I, when I moved from Los Angeles, California, back to Baltimore, I was taking a risk, right? But the gain was high. The gain that I had was that I was gaining uh, a solid relationship. I was gaining uh, <clears throat> a family. You know what I mean? I was also uh, been able to gain a stable career because I was in my mind or at that moment in time, I was with a person that, you know, could help me and hold me down. The risk being that all that shit could crumble. <laughs> I could lose a relationship. I could lose the stability. I could not even have gained a career or I could lost my career because my stability was based on a relationship. You know what I'm saying? That's the big risk. That's a big risk. So when you're dealing with just like life situations, in order to like see what it is down the line, you got to be willing to take that risk with people. And you always going to have to take risks with people. It's never going to be not a chance where you're taking, we're not taking risks with people. Why? Because as human beings, as people of nature, you know what I'm saying? We, we fuck up. You know what I'm saying? We always make mistakes. But if you're willing to 
put in that that effort for that risk to turn into a positive reward, huh? Now, nah, my fault. I'm listening. I, I, I'm I'm still in the ATM right now. I'm multitasking, but I'm I'm with you. I'm listening. Oh, okay, okay. But if you're able to, um, you know, what I'm saying, turn that risk into a positive reward, it'll be beneficial to you in the end. Like for me, boom. I'm gonna use a perfect example, right? Okay, so back to my story. I moved here from Los Angeles, California. I, the, my intentions was to be in Los Angeles. I'm gonna just tell y'all right now. For the next 10 years. I did not plan on coming back to Maryland for 10 years, right? But I took a risk falling in love with somebody I thought was in love with me. I thought that we had a, a potential, uh, you know, I thought we was both on the same path of uh, elevating each other. You know what I'm saying? She had a, a children. I was trying to be, you know, stepdom or step dyke, whatever the fuck you call it. I was trying to be in the position of a family guy, you know what I mean? I love children. Her kids was dope as fuck. You know what I'm saying? But the risk I took was me pissing her off and her telling me to leave, which she did. I took the risk of losing out on money, which I did. I took the risk of losing relationships with her kids, which happened. You feel me? So in this situation, the benefits in the moment kind of didn't seem like it outweighed the, the game. But it ended up outweighing the game because, because I was up here in Merlin, because I was with her, because she was, you know, in a semi-stable situation, you know what I'm saying? She had her own car. You know what I'm saying? She had her own place. I was able to gain a career. You know what I mean? I was able to get a career through that. And my career is the best thing that could have happened to me. Uh, so, you know what I'm saying? It was beneficial in the end. So sometimes when you're taking risks, you may not see your, your reward like immediately. It may be a year from now. It may be two, from, two years from now. For me, my reward came two years from now. That was after the bitch motherfucker left me, broke up with me and shit. You know what I'm saying? I end up seeing the reward of that. You know what I'm saying? God started putting me in position. He blessed me uh, uh, in a way that I have a good management team. You know what I'm saying? He blessed me in a way that, you know what I'm saying? I'm able to uh, excel and I'm able to uh, teach myself uh, how to become greater in life. You feel me? Like it's, it's it, it was very much so beneficial, but some relationships will not be beneficial and the risk of jumping into that relationship with that person may be detrimental to your life. You may not ever come back from that. You feel me? And shout out to my boy, Black Corn Man for tapping in for a little bit while he could, but sometimes in life you take risk, right? You may invest in something, right? It may be, you may be thinking like, shit, this is the best risk. My man just told me about this cryptocurrency. I'm about to be a motherfucking millionaire, bitch. And then you end up losing all your damn money. Like, so it's a, like, it's, it's really a hit or miss for real. But at the end of the day, you gotta, you gotta take these risks. You feel me? And so the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking any risk. That's what Mark Zuckerberg said. Shout out to Mark Zuckerberg, the owner of Facebook, and I believe uh, Twitter too. And Instagram. I think that man, oh no, no. I think Elon Musk now owns Instagram, but I think Mark Zuckerberg on Instagram and Facebook. So, but but shout out to Mark Zuckerberg because that's a a, a very strong coat. And I'm gonna repeat that for y'all. The only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking any risk. You gotta take risk. When my when my PM hired me, guess what? She took a risk. She took a risk. Why did she take a risk? Because although my interview was well, she didn't really know who I am as a person until I showed her who I am. And then she saw that the risk she took with me being a really inexperienced leasing agent was beneficial and very 
were warful in the end because number one, I'm a motherfucking hard worker, bitch. I works hard. I, I'm going to do what I'm supposed to. You ask me to do something, I'm going to do it immediately. You feel me? I'm going to do extra, actually. You know what I mean? I'm going to be here on time and early. Every time. You always can count on me to be here on time and early. So for my PM, it was a beneficial hire. You feel me? Because I do what I've got, I got to do. That's why I'm late right now to my own show. You feel me? Because I was doing what I got to do. Now, uh, let me see what this said. The only strategy, oh yeah. Okay. Sorry, I know I got to read from my notes sometimes. I, I be digressing. So the quote alone sums uh, the quote alone sums up entrepreneurship, business, and investing. If you're not taking no risk, you're not getting no rewards. Period. If you want rewards, you're not taking no risk. You ain't gonna get it. You gotta take risk, right? Because it's, it's gonna tell you your tolerance level. It's gonna tell you if you a sheep or you a wolf. You feel me? You ever see a wolf at the zoo? All right. So if you're not out here doing, you know what I'm saying, investing type shit, you're not, you know what I mean? You're not taking those risks. You, like my mother. My mother is, is she's very comfortable living right now, right? She comfortable. I would dare to say my mom's a millionaire. You feel me? But guess what? Guess what? She ain't become one by uh, not taking risks. She took a lot of risk, you know what I'm saying? And she she uh, lost money too, taking these risks. But the benefit is the regenerative richness that she has now, the stream, you know what I'm saying? Endless. You feel me? Not, now, that's not to say that my mother got money to blow on dumb shit, no. But she definitely, uh, she definitely good, you feel me? But that's because she was able to take good risk in life and she benefiting off the rewards. So that's what I'm trying to get to. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to invest and take risk in investments and be able to see the benefit in the long run because I know what it is when you invest in or when you put in your time into something or someone. Right? Even it, I'm not even talking about like just relationships like even with jobs, yo, like you giving you giving your energy to something at a job is a risk because people may not appreciate your effort, right? Your effort may go to a blind eye. Nobody may not even appreciate that you working hard, you uh, doing, going above and beyond. The risk is you may quit. <laughs> You better motherfucker quit. But you got to stay steadfast. You got to stay ten toes. You feel me? Because that risk you taking with that job, it will be beneficial. People are always watching you. I, I used to sell cars, right? And so my manager told me, this dude manager from New York, I can't even think of his name, no, but he told me, hey, Kato, you know some people are always watching you. I'm like, damn. I'm going to take that in. But why they watching me, though? Okay? People are always watching you. Even when you don't think nobody watching you, they watching you. Let me tell you, it's so true. So that's why, especially when you have a career or you're somebody of prominence and you're somebody, you don't even, even got to be nobody of prominence, but it goes for, mainly for the people of prominence or if you're in a position where you're dealing with a lot of people on a regular basis, you want to always make sure that you're recognizing what you're doing on the outside of that position. You feel me? People always watching you. In this day and age, we we the viral, we the viral, viral error. So everybody want always put you on a screen. You feel me? They always want to put you on the gram. You understand? So shit's crazy. So you always got to be mindful. So I always try to be mindful of, of situations and the things that I say. 
around people, you know what I'm saying? Because what I say about somebody and that person is not dead, I would definitely feel comfortable saying it to their face. You feel me? That's just the person I am. But you always want to be mindful of those things. Now, entrepreneurship is about taking risks. If your strategy is just to keep things as they are and don't bother taking risks, then there is not, then there's a hundred percent guarantee that nothing will come from this act. Right? I'm gonna repeat that. Entrepreneurship is about taking risk. If, if you want to be your own boss, if you want to do your own thing, if you want to tell people, look, bitch, I'm a boss, I'm an entrepreneur. Then you got to take risk. Being an entrepreneur is taking risk. If your strategy is just to stay the same, if your strategy is just to be complacent as an entrepreneur, you not going to make no money. Okay? If right. you call yourself an entrepreneur, you already know risk is involved. So if you're take risk to and prosper. Say it again. Take risk to prosper. Yeah, man, you gotta take risk to prosper, bruh. So like if if you if you uh if your strategy is to keep things as they are and they don't and you don't bother taking risks, then there is a hundred percent guarantee that nothing will come from your risk because you're not willing to take action. For example, I'm gonna give you an example. I got a thousand dollars, right? If you don't, if 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 I don't have, uh, if I do not want to take risk by investing this thousand dollars or using it for a business, then I can't guarantee that I then I guarantee that I will fail at making any money. If I got a thousand dollars in my hand, right, and I don't know how to fit that thousand, I ain't gonna make no money. Yeah, it's all about doubling it. You got to double that money. And this is for if you're an entrepreneur. I'm not talking about if you working. You know what I'm saying? If you <clears throat> if you working, you try to invest. Okay, cool. But I'm talking about if, if, if being an entrepreneur is your shit. That's your income. You have to be willing, uh, you know, to know how to flip this money or put this money into something that's going to be beneficial for you and making more money, Right. Because you, your job is not just to be an investor or be an a, a entrepreneur. You're not making profit from shit. You have to be making. You have to be making profit. You know what I'm saying? You have to. It has to be risks that is, are beneficial and smart. So you might lose the amount partially or totally, but you might as well create a business that generates ten times that amount or have your return on investment five times that amount. So say you got thousand dollars. Yeah, you may lose. You may, if you don't invest, you're going to lose a little bit of that money or all the shit. But if you invest, you might make five times that thousand back. You feel me? So your risk, you also have to have as a personal perspective. And when I say that, that means given the fact that how well we individually uh, understand and are prepared for any given situation, right? So in life, we are we are naturally preparing ourselves for risk. Anything can happen. I'm going to give you a prime example. Boom. So the other day, I, I was supposed to go pick up my brother up, right? Let me, let, me, let me backtrack. Boom. I got an oil change. My mother told me, say, hey, you got to get an oil change. I got an oil change, right? So I go to the oil place. Guess what they tell me? They say, hey, look, Miss... If you don't, if you do not change this rim, your tire will bust. That's what they told me. So fast forward. I... I I never got the the the, the rim fit. I didn't change the rim. <laughs> didn't That's do it. Huh? I never changed the rim, right? Because I didn't want to take the risk of investing my money right then and there to get that shit fixed. I was like, yeah. "Fuck this shit." My mother just gave it. This shit not gonna. This shit ain't gonna fuck up, right? 
So boom, fast forward. My brother need a ride from the airport to to back to DC. Mind you, I live in Baltimore. Why on my way to this man? My tire pop. Wow. Joint pop. That joint just bust, bro. <laughs> that joint just bust. So the risk I took was thinking that nothing was gonna happen. And I, it the no the reward I took in getting that oil change was like nothing was gonna happen. But the risk on was ten times more than re the reward. <laughs> so now not only did I have to get my shit towed, I had to pay for towing. Uh -huh. I had to get yeah. my shit towed. I had to get my shit towed from towing to a, a tire shop to put the tire back on a fucked up rim just to drive the car to my garage. And now I got to get my car towed from the garage to a rent place so they can put it. And then I got to go online and buy the rent. Like, I done fucked up for real. You know what I'm saying? All so because you're trying to you, avoid the risk. Cause All because you tried to avoid the risk initially. And now you, you paying for that shit on the back end. You feel me? So in, in a personal perspective, perspective, if something is risky, like monetary wise, that but it's beneficial for you in the long run, do that shit. Moving forward, if the motherfucker tell me I need this, 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 I'm gonna get we'll it. Get this, 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 yeah, give me that shit. Run me that shit now. <laughs> give it to me now. A saying that I, I just picked up on that I'll be trying to get on. I'm I'm a little slow on it. It's hard on me. You know, saying we from the gutter. It's tough on. But the shit that they be saying is that if you want to make money, you got to spend it. You got to spend it. You got to spend the money, bruh. You got to spend the money, bruh, because there's no reward when you don't take risk. All right. And how you going to know your tolerance or how you going to know what's a good risk and what's a bad risk if you're not taking risk? Yeah. You're going to be green to every situation that you knew. Motherfuckers just going to be motherfuckers sticking knives in your back every time. Boop. Ripping your Boop. shit. Oh, this nigga green. Oh, okay. This nigga green as hell. You feel me? And even in relationships, if you if you dealing with a person, they're going to be like, oh, you dumb as shit. You just give me everything I want. What? <laughs> <laughs> the risk is your ass, bitch. You can't do that. Don't give nobody everything. You got to make them work for it. The reward in them working for it, the risk is them working for it. The reward is your loyalty that you're going to get from me. They're going to value get my it. Unconditional love. <laughs> That, that reward is the value that they place in everything that you do for them after that. Okay, now you value this relationship. Exactly. Exactly. If they put a little risk in, in paying attention to you, communicating with you, you know, dealing with the bullshit, you know what I'm saying? The reward is that you help that person grow mentally, spiritually, financially, and you also help them. You you now are like that covering because now they coming to you. Hey, look, what you think about this? Or how can we do this? Or how can we be beneficial this way? You know what I'm saying? So if you are doing things right, the risk you may see is like dealing with somebody's may, may, maybe chaotic thinking or mindset. If you are able to like stick out there and like try to figure it out with them. The reward is beneficial because not only do you got a good person with you, you got somebody that's willing to help you make money. You got somebody that's not lazy. You got somebody that's willing to um, help you heal. You know what I mean? Somebody that understands you. That right there. The value and understanding. Come on. The value of understanding is so important because I believe a lot of people just feel misunderstood. You know, I do. I talk to a lot of people and people are like, I'm always doing something for somebody. When's somebody going to do something for me? But that's kind of selfish because at the end of the day, you taking risks. But you have to know, you have to be able to recognize the risk that you're taking. So if you are the person that's always doing something for somebody and somebody's not doing for something for you, then you're not making good risk investment. 
with Calculated with life. Risk. You gotta take the time and see what am I doing and what am I looking to get out of this. Yeah. This is very beneficial. You know what I'm saying? You have to do that. Risk is also, you know, given the fact that how well we individually know and understand and are prepared for a given situation. That same situation can present risk for one person and not the other, right? So for one person, you invest in something and that shit could take off. But for the next person, you can invest in something and that shit just be a total flop. So you have to be uh, you have to be able to understand and individually know and prepare for every situation and just know who you are and where your risk level is. If your risk level is not like high, it's okay. That's that's okay. Maybe you'll get there, but you invest, you go f- with the risk that you're comfortable with and it's beneficial for you. If if in fact we, we can tilt the normally balanced risk reward equation to our advantage with knowledge, understanding, and advanced preparation for what happens or what we're planning to do. So you can assess a risk if you have uh, an advantage like planning the risk, you know what I'm saying? Like knowing what what, what possibly, it's called predicting or forecasting they have in the business world. So if yeah, you're able to forecast, forecasting. you feel forecasting. me? You I know, know the risk is going to come up, so I'm going to put this to the side. I know it could possibly get blown completely out the water, so I'm going to make sure I got what I need to still survive over here. But that risk is right there. It's ready, and I'm ready to take it. That risk it is ready. Up, I'm ready, I'm ready. To you feel me? You have, to, you have to know it. You have to know that this shit gonna, might flop. It's, it might flop right here. It might flop right here, but that's okay because I already knew it was going to flop. And, flop or float, I'm ready, though. Flop or float, I'm fucking float ready. Float, I'm ready. And you could take that You could take that scenario and you could put that in life. Regardless of whether I'm at a job or I'm owning my own job, it's about me. Whether, whether it, it's beneficial or not, I'm still going to float. Because I'm the risk. I'm the investment. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense. You know, so if you know the if you know your business well and you and can expect business risk to occur, like we were just saying, it's no longer a risk, right? So if you ooh, that's powerful. If you know the business and you know your business well and you know that business risk is going to occur, it's no longer a risk. You planning for it now. You know what you're doing. While if you do something new or different and it generates something you don't expect, that effect is a definition of a risk. So risk is something that you do and not knowing that a risk is going to come from it, right? That's a risk. But if you are a, if you are a well knowledgeable in your business and you are able to expect business risk, it's no longer a risk. It means that you're knowledgeable in your business and you understand what's going to happen. That's if this part of happens. the day-to-day business. So I know it's risky to do this, but that's part of me getting through business. If I don't take this risk, I'm not going to be able to get it done. I'm doing it. That's, exactly. that's literally exactly like with my locations. I know I could get robbed putting this shit at this location, could get hit. But if I don't put it at a location that could possibly get hit, I'm not making no fucking money. You're not making no motherfucking money. But now that you know that this is a, a site that can get hit, what you do is... You get maybe like a little security officer, a, P, a SPO that's a that's a gun, got a gun carrying license, and you say, "Hey, look, I'm gonna pay you for an hour. I need you to just watch my back." Yep, sit right here, sit on it. Sit right here. If you see a nigga that looks suspicious, blast that man. <laughs> Take his fucking head off. That part. Take that man fucking head off. You feel me? Because I'm paying you for a duty. <laughs> I'm going to try to mess with it a little bit, but not really. I just want to take Now, my experience showed me that in the importance of taking risks helped me face situations with an, uh, you know, an orientation that was risk, that the risk was important. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's investment, whether it's jobs, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's a new friend, you know what I'm saying? I have since understood that once I know my target and set my goals, no risk for me is too much to take. Like, I know that once I once I know something, it's no risk that's too too big for me. I I'm I'm willing to take the motherfucking risk. 
Now, uh, the principle of understanding the importance of taking risk has improved my performance in all my areas of my life and has helped me to manage my personal and my personal, you know what I'm saying, projects or, or my personal relationships because I understand at the end of the day uh, yeah, that, hey, right. look, if this person not giving me this, this, We should have needed. I just came in. I'm like, yeah, man. I came to bring y'all back to TV. Feel me? Now, um... I have resolved to pay more attention to the rewards of my endeavors instead of glorifying the risk associated with the projects, you know what I'm saying, or with whatever thing I'm investing in. The pains associated with my risk may be enormous, but the joy of the rewards is over is can be overwhelming sometimes. Uh, like when you invest in something, like when you benefit and you profit off of something and you, you get a lot of money, it can be kind of overwhelming. You're like, damn. I done made a bag off this shit. You know what I'm saying? It can be kind of like overwhelming a little bit. Now, people must be willing to face life challenges with an understanding of the risk while focusing on the rewards that lie ahead. The right application of these principles will improve people's performances. Now, um, this wraps up my show. You feel me? So, um... The basically the the topic was no risk, no reward. You know what I'm saying. Shout out to everybody that's tapping in with me on YouTube or Spotify. You know what I'm saying. Wherever you streaming my 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 channel at, uh, I really appreciate y'all. If you want to follow me on my personal page, man, make sure y'all follow me at Big Homie underscore Smiles backup page forty one. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate y'all for tapping in, man. We gotta. Always got very informative shows. I was going to do a story today, but it, I, I kind of started late. So I'll do one next week. You know what I mean? Um, shout out to everybody out there taking risks. You feel me? That's beneficial for themselves. You feel me? Um, unfortunately, my boy Simba is back incarcerated. I don't know what the fuck going on. I feel like, you know what I'm saying? The police just was on his ass. And shit went down. I don't know whatever the fuck he was doing, and they bagged him. So hopefully the nigga ain't got to do twenty years now because he done fucked up. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I'm I'm praying it wasn't because of him. Because that's my boy, free Simba till he free again. You feel me? I'm I'm gonna always support my man. I'm gonna always support Simba. I'm gonna always make sure I'm shouting him out. You feel me? I'm gonna always make sure that you know. He know I fuck with him. You know what I mean? Because I fuck with Simba on the long way. You understand? Hold up. My man, I don't know. He, he muted. Hey, 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 gang, gang. Oh, he doing work. That's why he muted. So, you know, I appreciate y'all tapping in, man. Free Simba till he's free. You all right now. Make sure y'all go ahead and stream uh, first day out. That shit is on all platforms. You feel me? Soon as you know, the black woman doing this stuff, doing a, a million things at once. Still tapping in with the with the fuck with the shit, you feel me? Oh, these neighborhoods, yeah. Shout out to my uh, fraternity fraternity members, my sorority members of the street. You know, uh, shout out to everybody that just. This is happening with me, man. If I was to die today or tomorrow, I would want the world to remember me by this quote. If, if be more, do more. Like, because I'm living in Baltimore, be more, do more. Be more, do more. Shout out to my APM. I stole that from her. <laughs> So be more, do more, man. Uh, shout out to Capitol Heights. Shout out to Los Angeles. Shout out to South, South Central. Shout out to neighborhood. I mean, I'm sorry. We're going to say Hermes. Long live Hermes. Because, you know what I'm saying, Nip was a part of the program that had him killed. Like Charleston White said. So we're going we gonna to say long live Hermes. Because Hermes was the man that we respect. You know what I mean? So if you don't get that, fuck you. Now, uh, long live Takeoff too, man. Shout out to my man Takeoff. My man got 
booted up out of here, but that's all right. God had a bigger plan for his life. He need to be up there in the heavens with his peoples, you feel me? But God going to revenge his mind, say to the Lord. So God going to take care of J. Prince Jr. and J. Prince. Because they wild, they wild, they some wild dudes. You know what I'm saying? They out here doing the devil's work. And my boy take off should not have been smoked. So God going to take care of them Bamas. Uh, shout out to my co-host, Black Corn Man LA. Make sure y'all follow my boy, Black underscore Corn underscore Man underscore LA. You feel me? He out there doing his thug fizzle. Um, shout out to my, my fine ass hairdresser. I'm gonna give her a special motherfucking shout out because she she's so motherfucking sexy. So shout out to her for doing my hair. You know what I'm saying? I like when pretty women do my hair and shit. So shout out to her. She bad. You feel me? And just shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to the my my ex. Uh, partner that did me wrong because if you ain't do me wrong bitch I wouldn't be able to know who I am as a person I wouldn't have been able to get my, myself to somebody in this entirety so I now understand what I look for in a woman. I understand what I look for in a, a, a partner. I understand what I look for in a business partner. I understand what I look for when it comes to reciprocating that love. So if you're not giving me that, we either going to just be friends or you're going to get the motherfucking deuces. Or I'm going to ghost you. I'm going to fuck you. And, and the shit going to be so bomb, we, we going to be together. Or, I'm going to ghost you. You ain't hitting none of the other two. So you get ghosted because, what? Yeah. So that was the show today. You know what I mean? Shout out to her. Oh, shout out to my mother. She had her gala today, man. I mean, not today, but she had it on Saturday. That joint was torch. Shout out to... Uh, Black Alley, the go-go man. Shout out to Capitol Heights, man. Shout out to all the artists. Again, Free Simba. Make sure y'all check them out. Shout out to Black Corn Man. Shout out to my PM man, my APM, and my co-worker, BM. Damn, there's a lot of abbreviations. So, you know, just shout out to y'all. You know what I mean? I appreciate y'all. I love my career. I love what I do. Yeah, so you know, next show hopefully is very good and is is most effective. I work from home, so that's that's God's blessings all right there. But yeah, this is a good podcast, a good show, man. I appreciate y'all tapping in with me, and um, hopefully, I'm able to download this episode and put it on Spotify like I'm posting. Say, man, it's Street Top Radio LA.